Hello book reading friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Hello, welcome to the new bookshelf space. Welcome to the office officially, hi. Today I bring you guys a video that I am super excited about making. You guys know, or maybe not, or I would like to believe at least that I'm notorious for attempting to read books in one sitting. I don't know why I sometimes find it so difficult to read books kind of spread out. I don't know if I'm the only one. Let me know that in the comments if I am. However, I really really like to read books in one sitting. It makes the experience so much better for me sometimes. I really grasp the story. I get in there. I'm fully immersed. And it's just an all-around really great experience. And so I thought I would bring you guys a list of books that I read in one sitting that I think are super easy to get into, super easy to again feel immersed by, and books that will go by incredibly fast because they're just, in my opinion, that good. Before we get started, I will also make a small side note and say not all of these books are super super short and by super short I mean 100 to 200 pages. Some of these are over 200 pages, over 300 pages. I think all of them though are under 400 pages and I think because of the pacing of these books, because of the themes of this book, and because of how good they just generally are, it's easy for the pages to pass by without you noticing how quote-unquote long the book may be. I also want to know, especially because I've been feeling slumpy in the month of May and I've literally only read one book this month, only one. What books do you think are great to read in one sitting, be it short, kind of medium length? What are some books that you sat down and you could not put down? You already know Mel loves a good intermission and this is no different. Because before we get started, I do need to give a massive shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Scentbird. If you guys have been here for a while, then you know how much I love Scentbird. I've worked with them in the past and this is actually a service I've been using since I was in high school. It's been a hot minute. I've used it. I've loved it and it's honestly, in my opinion, the best way to build a fragrance collection without spending a lot of money. Scentbird is especially cool because they are constantly reimagining the buying experience of fragrances. They let you choose one fragrance a month for just $16 and they make sure that you get to pick so that there are no surprises and that way you get to try whatever you want. They've got fragrances, colognes for all types of occasions and you'll get a 30-day supply so that it'll last you the entire month. All you have to do is go to Scentbird's website and take their quiz and you'll be able to unlock their entire catalog, which based on your preferences, your past purchases, and the notes that you particularly like, they'll help you find fragrances from all sorts of different brands, which they work directly with, from Prada to Gucci, Versace, Dolce, Gabbana, and some other niche brands like Deck of Scarlet, Skylar, and Confessions of a Rebel. This month I got two fragrances and look how cute the packaging is. They come in a variety of different colors and they just twist up and you've got your whole thing. You can take it with you everywhere. And the first one I have here is by Commodity. It is called Milk. This literally smells like the most comforting candle. It just smells like a warm hug. And the notes are cold milk accord, musk, warm marshmallow, woods, and tonka bean. And the other one I have here, I'm literally living my Juicy Couture dreams back from like 2012. This is Viva La Juicy Noir. This is like one of those perfect scents where it smells equal parts flirty and <laughs> juicy, but also just very clean. And the notes for this one are berries, vanilla, caramel, honeysuckle, and gardenia. So if you do want to check Scentbird out, you can go ahead to their website and use my code MELREADS55 to get 55% off your first month, meaning that you'll be able to get your very first fragrance for just $7, which is an absolute steal. So to start out my list, I have a newer release, and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Honestly, either Book Lovers or People We Meet on Vacation, I think both are books that you can just sit down and not put down until you finish them. And so in this one, we follow Nora, who is a book agent, and we follow also her arch nemesis of sorts, who is Charlie. He is a book editor, and these two people will have a very unlikely encounter in a small town called Sunshine Falls after her sister Libby makes up this pretense for them to go to the small town, and she kind of has this checklist situation that they need to check off so that Nora can experience life with newfound eyes. But there is a lot more to it than meets the eye. It does have a lot of contemporary elements, a lot of themes of grief, and also just a lot of familial dynamics which are incredibly interesting, particularly with Libby and Nora. I think the relationship was great and really complex, and I think it in general just encompasses a very human experience. Sometimes when things happen in life and you find yourself switching roles, you know, whether you were the child or you were treated like a partner when you were a child, it's got a lot of themes of childhood trauma as well. You find roles switching and that sometimes affects the relationships around you and that you're obviously a part 
of and I think the way that Emily Henry captures that in Book Lovers, particularly with Libby and Nora, is pretty great. And I think Nora as a character, if you've ever experienced work as escapism, if you can relate with the themes of being a workaholic, I think this is definitely a book that is going to hit very close to home. I was reading this book and I genuinely felt called out by a lot of the things that Nora was kind of internalizing or realizing as the story kept moving forward. And so I think in ways this book was also therapeutic for me because I constantly need to hear things that'll pull me out of that hole of only working. And so Nora was a character that I deeply related to. And then Charlie, who is the love interest, Charlie is absolutely incredible. I absolutely adored him, the banter that he has with Nora, but also who he is as a person. He also has very complex familial dynamics, which I think is basically a theme now with every single Emily Henry book and one that I continue to enjoy. And so him throughout the story proving who he really is as opposed to what people believe him to be was something that I thoroughly enjoyed. And in general, it was just full of sexual tension. It was sultry. Again, the banter was phenomenal. I typically hate pop culture references, but the ones in this book just made my heart sing. And so Emily Henry just wins again with me. And I think if you really get into the story and you sit down, the pages will literally pass you by. This is a story that goes by immensely quick. You will not notice time pass by because it certainly happened to me at times where I sat down and then I opened my eyes and I was like, oh, that was a hundred pages. Okay, there we go. So it was a super fun read and I loved it. Next up, I have A Dowry of Blood. Now, I think this is the shortest. Definitely it is. It's the shortest book on this whole list. A book that you can truly sit down and finish in about an hour or two. It's super short and if you actually look at the pages, not every single page is like fully filled out. Some of them are shorter passages and some pages are even empty. So I think it's a fairly quick read. So this one is A Wives of Dracula retelling where you've got a polyamorous relationship and it talks about the toxic cycles of abuse that women constantly have to go through. It also has a lot of social commentary as you'd expect from a gothic novel. And I think the subversions of the original Dracula story are fantastic. It is also, I mean, I guess it could be considered as epistolary writing because the story is essentially a letter to Dracula and about taking ownership of your own fate, of your own life. And I honestly really, really enjoyed this. It's very, very lyrical. So if you're not into lyrical writing, maybe not want to go into, but I think that's one of the most compelling parts of this book. The fact that it's short, the fact that it's beautifully written, and honestly, the themes of feminism in this were also really, really great. And the characters are super complex as well. You can definitely tell how greatly fleshed out these characters are and how flawed they are, but also how, again, they want to take ownership of their own fate, of their own lives, and how they truly want something more out of life than to be tied down to this man. And so I personally found it really phenomenal and super interesting. It's hard to talk about it, though, without really spoiling it because it's such a short book. But I will say, I will say, if you want a really short book, this is probably the best way to go. How could I come in here without talking about this book, which I essentially read almost in one sitting, and that is The Last Wish. This is the first set of novellas for The Witcher, and let me tell you guys, if you get a hold of the audiobook and you sit down with this book, which is already fairly short, time will pass you by and you will not even notice that you finished the book, because it certainly happened to me. I think this is one of those addicting stories that you start and you go, one more page, one more chapter, one more page, and then by the time that you're like, okay, I can put the book down. You've already finished it. It's one of those reads where at least it was for me and I loved every second of it. Also, if you like fairy tale retellings, this is a great one to go to because that was an unexpected element of it for me. Every story is literally a fairy tale retelling from Cinderella to Rumpelstiltskin to Sleeping Beauty, but just know it was incorporated super seamlessly into the story. Whereas if you didn't know they were retellings and somebody told you, you'd be like, oh, oh, so that's what it was. But if you don't know what The Witcher is about, we essentially follow Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher. Witchers are sort of bounty hunters, assassins for hire, and they hunt down monsters, beasts, and technically anything evilly supernatural. And the reason why I love this so much is because you can tell that this particular set of novellas, which is the recommended starting point for the series, I actually think it is like the starting point for the series, if I'm not mistaken. You can tell how all of these stories are going to come back into the actual main series, and I absolutely love that. The ending of this book was also super epic, but also just left you with a lot of questions to the point where you would immediately want to start the second book, which is Sword of Destiny. But I think it's just one of those high fantasy books that it's easy to read because even though, again, it's high fantasy, it doesn't have this super complex magic system that you're gonna sit there and be confused as to what the hell is happening. I think it's very easy to go through.
through and very easy to understand, which I think is one of the most compelling parts of the series as a whole. I mean, I, I say series as a whole and I haven't read the series as a whole. And Geralt, as a main character, his moral compass is absolutely phenomenal. He is a joy to read from because you can tell that he is a good person. There are misogynistic elements to the story which are undeniable, but I think Geralt as a character morally is one of the best characters that I've read about. He knows what he'll do and he knows what he won't do in order for justice to be served, in order for his duty to be done. And I love that he is not willing to compromise who he is and what he stands for because of money or because of what people are requesting because he got some wild ass requests in that first book. It's also very action packed and the cast of side characters as well. You've got characters that are funny, you've got characters that really complement Geralt. I've talked about this book more in depth in other videos, but I think all in all, all in all, it is a great experience. Next up, I have The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. How could I not mention this in here? I literally read book one and two, I think immediately one after the other and both basically in one sitting. This is just a bingeable series. The books are incredibly short and they are so, so, so exciting. Also, with the upcoming series, it's kind of perfect if you do want to sit down and read this. And again, it'll go by super, super fast because the books are, again, unfoundable and they're short. And we follow a young boy named Percy who is a demigod, he discovers. He has had a lot of issues in schooling. He has been expelled, he has been suspended, and he sees things that people don't seem to be seeing. And he seems to learn things very differently, letters rearranging themselves. And him understanding Greek lettering better than he understands English lettering. And one day come to know, he'll realize that the best place to be is Camp Half-Blood, which is a place where all half-bloods reside, all demigods reside, where they train and they go on quests to these exciting adventures to help the gods. And that was probably the worst synopsis I've ever given of Percy, but I hope it honestly gives it some semblance of justice, because honestly, I absolutely love this series. But I think the beauty of this, beyond the exciting parts, beyond the Greek gods element, beyond the deities, beyond the quests, beyond the action, beyond the powers, I think what is so cool about this is the themes that this addresses. ADHD in particular, and I find that that's one of the most beautiful parts about this book, where it truly proves to you as a reader that regardless of what is manifesting into your life, particularly again in this book in the form of ADHD, it does not stop you. It does not make you less than. It does not stop you from doing anything. You are equally as good. You can do the same things, albeit maybe differently, but still you can be great. You can achieve great things and you can do all the same things as the person next to you. And I absolutely love that message. It's all throughout the series and also dealing with different archetypes and debunking stereotypes. It's honestly a really beautiful story. There's a reason why it's so highly coveted by the reading community. There's a reason why there's a million editions of these. And there's a reason why it's gotten a movie and now it's getting a show because it's just that good. And I absolutely love Parsi. It's honestly so wholesome. It's so wholesome, but so exciting. Next up, I have a manga series, maybe one that you wouldn't expect me to recommend. And that is The Midnight Secretary. Now, let me tell you guys, mangas are incredibly bingeable. And I think we all know this, but particularly this one, it's a very short series. First of all, I think it has six, seven volumes. I don't think it has more than eight. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I still haven't finished the series. However, however, I literally read the first four volumes back to back because it was honestly so campy, so ridiculous, so funny, but so good all at the same time. And it's honestly one of those manga series that you would not put in like the best mangas of all time, but it's honestly so enjoyable that you can't stop reading it. We basically follow Kaya Satosuka, who is a secretary to this really magnanimous figure. He is a CEO, he runs his company, and lo and behold, he is actually a vampire. And she offers herself to him in blood, in body, and in everything in between. And the relationship essentially unfolds after that. And although I do think elements of this are super frustrating, like Kaya's unflinching loyalty, to this man. I think also the themes of devotion and the themes of romance and the angst and that back and forth of, oh, I can't be with you, but I'm actually really into you are really, really interesting. And I think also the element of her being his secretary and him being the CEO. It's like, honestly, if you graph Fifty Shades
shades of gray and you grab twilight and you merge it together which is essentially the same thing because 50 shades is just twilight fan fiction and you thrust it into a manga format honestly you cannot tell me otherwise except there's no bdsm in this but you can't tell me otherwise another book that i literally could not put down as i was reading is made in korea by sarah sook now you guys know that the year that this book came out was it last year i'm pretty sure it came out last year it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year it was pitched as a k-beauty sort of narrative where we have two young teens who are both in high school valerie and wes and they both have competing k-beauty brands now they have these for completely different reasons valerie wants to take her grandma to a trip to paris whilst wes with very disapproving parents given his career of choice he wants to study music needs to raise this money in order to apply for college himself pay for it himself and not have to depend on his parents money which comes tied with their approval and their expectations and along the way these rivals we just experience crushes and love and angst and everything in between and this one was just so so wholesome and i think the k-beauty element of this the entrepreneurial part of this was honestly so fun and when you include the contemporary themes of what both of these characters are going through you just make the narrative more compelling honestly the banter between these two the competitiveness between these two and just the driving force for both of their missions was honestly beautiful to read about and i love characters like these characters that are genuinely so committed to their cost they will stop at nothing to really attain what they're looking for and who are just seeking more to life than what is either being handed to them or what's in front of them and i think both valerie and wes were incredible characters to read from again the k beauty aspect of it just spoke to my heart and again i'm just a sucker for a contemporary romance where there's a lot of interesting familial dynamics going on and where the characters are just very clearly motivated and they know what they want and they will stop at nothing to get it and last but not least i have another really short book and that is on earth we're briefly gorgeous by ocean vong i read this last month i loved it i cried the audiobook is also narrated by the author himself which is honestly the best kind of experience and the writing is so lyrical it's so beautiful that you honestly cannot put this book down until you're done with it and that's the best kind of story the audiobook is also obviously really short because the book is short how many times can i say that anyway so you can really just sit down and listen to this if you're the type of person who speeds up their audiobook you're not the type of person who speeds up their audiobooks and you'll finish really fast and in this one we follow little dog as he writes a letter to his mother who cannot read and in this letter he addresses a lot of things that he hasn't been able to address before parts of himself that he is now presenting to his mother again in ways that he really hasn't been able to do in the past addressing generational trauma addressing parental trauma childhood trauma exploring these themes of a family riddled by war particularly the vietnam war and this is ultimately a very what word do i want to use here inquisitive exploring explorative that's not a word but that's kind of what i want to use if you know what i mean but this all boils down to a little dog just exploring different areas of his life and trying to come to clear concise but not necessarily conclusions and i think what was beautiful about this book was obviously not only the writing it's very purple pro it's very lyrical honestly it's the fact that as you read this or at least it happened to me thoughts that i already had experiences that i had when i was young and kind of resurfaced some levels of trauma that i had experienced in the past whilst being cathartic and whilst being very therapeutic which honestly is all that you could want as a writer when you're writing these types of stories and so i think regardless of what background you come from i think it's a live lift experiences that could potentially make this book relatable relatable or not to you but beyond that i just think the narrative is so compelling it was so heartbreakingly beautiful to see little dog just really explore all these events in his life and try and make sense of them try and understand why his mom acted the way that she did why he reacted the way that he did and why she ultimately became the person that she did and same with him and it's just hands down one of the most human experiences prose wise that i have 
ever read and that just attests to the competency of Ocean Vuong as a writer and I cannot wait to read more of his works because if this is any testament to whatever else he's written be it poetry or other prose books I know I am going to sob my eyes out because this truly shattered my heart and that is it for today you guys those are all of the books I wanted to come on here and talk about all of the books to read in one sitting binge worthy reads unputdownable reads however you want to phrase them all of the above apply I hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe for more bookish content if you haven't done that already I am constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you do not want to miss and if you want more content from me yours truly hello if you want a book club live shows extra videos a discord server and just all of the fun I do have a patreon it is always linked down below alongside all of my social medias thank you once more to Sendbird for sponsoring today's video don't forget that you can get 55% off with my code melreads 55 to get your first fragrance for only seven so I will be leaving my link at the top of the description so you guys can check that out. I love you guys so, so much and I shall see you on the next one. Bye guys.